right. <clears throat> hey, welcome to another episode of the Blackout Tips Podcast. I am your host, Rod. Joined as always by my lovely co-host, Karen. Uh, can you turn you up? Turn me up. I'm low. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, you know what? It's probably your headphones. Oh, because I was like, you just sound muffled. <laughs> Well, <laughs> let's see what we can do. There you go. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I forgot I turned the headphones down the other day. Um, anyway, welcome to that impromptu um, introduction. <laughs> uh, we also have, our, we're not alone. No. We also have a friend, as you can probably see from either the show description or the title, but it is the man, the myth, the legend, the comedian, Mike Kaplan. What's going on, man? Hey, happy to be here. Uh, feeling very mythical and uh, <laughs> legendary. It's it's fast. I never thought about that. That uh, myth and legend by themselves seem pretty similar, but mythical and le- mythical sounds fictional, and legendary sounds factional. So yeah, I, I I was always I always wondered about that. I'm like, what's myth? What are myth and legend doing that are different? And uh, now they're basically opposites. So uh, that good night, everybody. <laughs> it's interesting because uh i'm watching uh, i'm playing i'm watching this uh tv show it's a it's a uh cartoon it's called uh dota dragon's blood or something it's season two and uh, a lot of those shows with like dragons and stuff they all rely on like the legend the fable the tale mm. like it's all like the story of but yeah i guess it's it's amazing that uh, so many of our legends, myths, and stories just mean like elaborate lie. There's mm-hmm. no such thing as dragons. Okay, okay. I'm with you. I even play a game called Fable. They've had three versions, uh, working on the fourth one. I'm excited about it, and the game is called Fable. So. Yeah, so I guess it's weird that, that yeah, those things are, but in my mind, if we think like the legend of Muhammad Ali, that happened. Yes. But oh, the myth yeah. of Muhammad Ali is mm-hmm. like, that's a lie. That didn't happen. The even the word the word story itself uh, could mean like you know like once upon a time uh, a made up story a fictional story but also like news stories like a story yeah. could be like this is from a true story so like <laughs> uh, it's like a tool you know I guess you know the way that like a hammer can be used to you know build a house constructively or uh, d- you know break walls and uh, break things so it depends on how you're using the concept of a story or perhaps a legend or a fable, and, and but yeah. What's funny is in the TV shows, oftentimes the 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 myth and the legend always end up being true because that's what makes the story good, right? You introduce <laughs> a myth or a legend in act one and it's always like, that dragons, I don't, he, he's lost his noggin or whatever. And then by the end, it's like, of course dragons are real. They wouldn't have told you that in act one. <laughs> to end the story with no dragons. So it's kind of interesting that that happens. Um, oh, yeah. Imagine if in Game of Thrones, there were no thrones. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and of course, we didn't have to imagine dragons. Uh, uh, the, uh-huh. the group or the uh, the dragons. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know who this was, but I saw a tweet years ago that, that really stuck with me. That it was, ba- I, whoever it was, great work. It was... Uh, the quote, imagine dragons, and they attributed that to a director on the set of Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Every stunt coordinator, you know. All right. Here's a green screen. Here's yeah. a blue screen. Imagine dragons right here. Um, Mike, man, you're about to go on tour. Um, mm-hmm. Well, tell us about the what's going on with the tour, man. Sure, thank you. Uh, I just got back from Seattle, so that was uh, this whole month. Uh, uh, just a couple days ago, this past weekend, Rini and I, my girlfriend and I, we flew to Seattle. It's my first uh, flight in a lot, of, only my second flight during uh, pandemic era times at all. Uh, mostly, we've been driving, and that's what's going to happen uh, later this month. Uh, next week, I, I'm just doing shows in New Jersey, so like just a little little dip of the toe out of uh new york where i live but then uh later this month the i think on the 21st of february uh we're gonna get in the car and start driving south uh and ultimately end up in florida uh where i've got some shows on the 25th and 26th but on the way down we're gonna stop in west virginia and we're gonna stop in i thought of y'all because we're gonna be i'm performing at the comedy zone in charlotte uh on 
Tuesday, 2-22-22. So, 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 If you like that Mitch Hedberg joke about just press, just press 2 for a while, then you'll enjoy the <laughs> calendar and my Tuesday date on 2 22 um, Horses galloping style, sound-wise. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. I don't, I actually don't know if I've ever, I've talked about with performing in Charlotte for years. I performed in other parts of uh, the Carolinas variously, but uh, glad to hone in uh, on your home exactly. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll feel, even if, even if you're not in the room, even if you're not in the city, uh, I'll feel, you know, the, uh, the, the love uh, resonating, rippling forth from where you once were. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited to do those shows and uh if i know i know that people might be watching and listening to this uh all over the the universe but uh if you're in you know if you have you have time it's uh it's just it's just three weeks away uh so you got time to get there if you're not there now but uh yeah i'm excited uh excited to be coming through yeah and i mean one it's very rare for us to get a comedian to come to charlotte like yes this is for me, some me reason and Roger talked about that for some reason they're everywhere in and it's funny though when you talk to comedians that's not used to here and they're used to up north because they'll be like, "Yeah, I'm in Raleigh." I was like, oh, "I wish I could catch like a bullet plane and make <laughs> you know and make it a bullet train and make it there like 30 minutes, but that's like three and a half hours away, so <laughs> I can't quite make it this time." Yeah, but um, so it's rare to get that. Um, so I, I really hope people come out. Um, and then um like they can go to your website and see uh all all of the stops, right? Oh yeah. Okay, so you gotta go to MikeKaplan.com, MYQ That's Kaplan.com. Right. That's um, it. and and uh, of course the other thing I was gonna say is of all the weird coincidences in life, um, I got this job writing for a TV show and I'll be in New York now. Um, <laughs> starting next week. <laughs> right. So I was like, like, what yeah, the fuck? Because I was like, <laughs> I would love to see him. <laughs> oh yeah. It's well, you know, uh, I don't hope this, but Maybe there'll be another variant with another surge that'll scare everyone into <laughs> being in their home. So you'll have to then be in Charlotte while yeah. I come there or stay home because the surge can oh, yeah. be so, <laughs> like a gift of the Magi type situation. But oh, we're like, yeah. I feel like we're like, uh, I don't know if you ever watched, do you watch Who's the Boss when it was on? You know, the uh, 80s yeah, or when I was a kid, yeah. Uh, there, I remember like one very specific episode where I'm sure this happens all the time on sitcoms and rom-coms and whatnot. This is the first one that I remember where like, you know, at the end of the show, I'm sorry to spoil who's the boss, but Angela and <laughs> Tony uh, get together. But before they get together, they're like, it's like a will they, won't they, Ross and Rachel kind of like, and one of them is like across the country from the other one or something. Mm -hmm. And they both decide to surprise the other one by flying across the country to where the other one is. And they're then they're like on the phone with the other and they're like, wait, you're you're in that, but I thought I was gonna, you were gonna, why didn't you, we should have, you know, and it's sort of like a sweet thing and eventually they're together, but that's what's happening with you and me, Rod, is yeah. uh, I'm like, I'm coming to Charlotte and you're like, I'm coming to New York. And I'm like, well, okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what's interesting? You, you can't really spoil who's the boss because you never told no. everybody who the boss was. Nope. So there's still a good reason to watch all the seasons. Mm -hmm. So you guys can be up on it with us and find out who really was the boss at the end of all that. Oh, yeah. And I've actually got a new show. I've got a couple spinoffs uh, that I'm working on. One of them involves trying to go back in time to figure it all out. And it's called When's the Boss? And then, <laughs> uh, of course, you've got... Uh, a, a sort of an anti-capitalistic takedown of the entire system of uh, finances and work that we find ourselves in before we replace it with a better system. And that one's called Why is the Boss? You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we definitely need that in life uh, right now, specifically. Um, but yeah, man, that's dope that you've been getting mm -hmm. out. Uh, we went to Seattle a couple years back mm -hmm. in the before times. Yes. And it was such a like cool city. It we, was. We kind of like stayed downtown because we were at this conference. Mm -hmm. we um, had a mall. But we, yeah, it was like, you know, we had like a, 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 a some crepes in the middle of the night on the street. There was like a crepery. Yeah, a crepe vendor. And he <laughs> just made them in front of us. It was absolutely delicious. So it was so fun. Do you get to go out and do stuff now? I mean, I know it's like the pandemic, so it's probably like limited stuff. But 
uh, when you are traveling, are you and Rini able to like, you know, see any sites or anything? Yeah. So in the, previously, like the way that I would, you know, uh, do things if I go to a town, certainly with Rini or, or if it's on my own, like I'll look up, you know, used bookstores, comic book stores, mm. vegan restaurants, you know, like cool parts of town. Uh, you know, Brooklyn-y, Portland-y, you know, uh, and I'll go, you know, I'll ask those places like, wait, where should I go? You know, what's, uh, if, if there's anything to recommend, uh, not like, you know, the, the classic touristy thing, sometimes like botanical gardens or, you know, like parks mm. to walk around in. Uh, obviously with the pandemic, we do sometimes still like, you know, poke into a, a thrift store or a, right. a bookstore. And, and Seattle in particular, I felt like of any place that I've been recently had the most like masks outdoors mm. on people per like, you know, per capita. Uh, mm -hmm. And I like talked to a friend, like I went, I hung out with a friend and he like showed me around his neighborhood. There was like, he's like, I love showing people like the streets and the alleys behind the streets because it's nice to see like the front of a building and the back of a building. <laughs> and there's like a chicken zoo in this neighborhood and like, <laughs> And he like showed me a couple cool books. There's like one place that's like a Ada's technical books and cafe. And it's just like a, there's like super cool, you know, like uh, queer friendly, like diverse neighborhoods and places uh, around. So like I, I hung out with this friend Emmett Montgomery, who's a comedian I met in like 2006 when mm -hmm. I was performing in Seattle for the first time. And so, yeah, he just, he showed me around uh, and I had a, a tea with another friend uh, in another part, we sat outside, you know, as many outdoor things as possible. The weather was actually, for this particular weekend, uh, really nice. I feel like it was probably in, like, the 50s and mm. pretty sunny, uh, not delivering the promise of uh, uh, Seattle's <laughs> normal yeah. uh, offerings. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and uh, and Rini and I, yeah, we went. We went out to dinner uh, with a two – we had a couple meals with a couple, like, uh, some new friends, some old friends. And uh, here's – Here's the, I don't know, this is like, uh, here's the secret, everyone. Uh, if you're a comedian listening to this show, if you're me, here's here's a new thing that I'm going to try to do whenever possible. Uh, is we, so I, I'd only had shows, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. We flew out to get, to come home Sunday. We flew in on Thursday. Normally I would just fly in on the day mm. of the first show, but uh, they put me up for an extra night. And I was like, just in case, because there was a snowstorm coming and who knows with, you know, travel these days, uh, anything's possible. I don't want to, you know, miss half of my shows. Right. And so uh, I used to not show up a day. Be I wouldn't want to like miss out on a night of performing. Like I'm like, if I, if I fly out Friday, I could do a show in New York on Thursday. But like mm. now I'm like not urgently cramming my schedule full of shows uh as much as possible and so it really worked out to like fly in thursday we didn't have to like get up super early in the morning we right, flew out rest. in the afternoon we got in in the evening we ate some food we went to sleep and then had a a whole extra day it's so funny because growing up my family we would like went for vacations we would like fly down to florida from new jersey to see our family and like just have a nice week in the sun during the winter, right? Christmas vacation or whatever, uh, or you know, break from school in February. And we would always fly. I remember waking up at like four, five, six in the morning, getting on a flight super early. And the idea that my family was like, "You want to, you know, because we don't want to like lose the whole day. You want, you want to, you want to you, you get in later." But I'm like, the amount of time that you're traveling is the same no matter when you're leaving, and either you're you're getting not enough sleep like you can't you can't make there be more time you're like right. hey uh here's a 20 pilot step on it you know what i mean <laughs> like, you uh so it's just and also we enjoy like rini and i enjoy not being rushed out of the house we enjoy like mm -hmm. oh if we get there if you oh man a delay when you don't have to be somewhere at a certain time is mm -hmm. like less stressful like oh i'll just read yes. my book longer at the airport like glad that we're gonna get there at all uh it was also super nice that i guess the time that we were flying on thursday we got bumped up to first class so we could lie down mm -hmm. while we flew Woo! uh and watched a couple movies and ate food and uh it, yeah, so uh, what was the question? Yes, I do I, some I, things. Yes. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah, you get out and do stuff. Um, here's what I think is interesting. Um, the way Mike talks and the way his brain works, because um, there's always people, um, and I'm sure they mean well, but there's always people after we have Mike on there like, oh, he talks like this, he goes this long and all this stuff. 
here's the thing. I was going to ask Mike questions every time he paused, and he just answered the question. So uh, really, so it's kind of interesting because you would have been talking, it just would have been interrupted by me being like, okay, yeah, you know what I'm thinking is, is uh, it's interesting how much people don't like travel because we're always rushing. And then he's just kind of like, oh, yeah, by the way, if you don't rush, travel's not that bad. So it's like, you know, I'm just saying, give yourself a break, everyone. Uh, uh, it. Um, did did you. you get the travel? Was that... Uh... That Dim Tai Fung place is Dim Tai Fung. Yes, is well. Uh, Mike is vegan. Oh, so I don't even know. Do they have it vegan? I don't know what their options are, but it was a it's a soup dumpling place. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what how I don't know how any of that works with the vegan stuff. To be honest with you, I, oh I don't my bad. But uh, but no, he. I was just thinking like, um, but I, I guess I wasn't looking at the menu to see if it. But it the, soup dumplings are so cool. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. <laughs> They're so oh yeah. Good. I've, I've had a down. soup dumpling here and there. It is uh, it is possible. They are capable. We have the technology. And uh, <laughs> I'll keep my eye out for it next time. Yeah. For sure. oh, so good, man. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I miss that place. I wish they had one on the East Coast. Me too. But, yeah, man, I, I thought, you know, because I've been working a lot lately. I've been mm -hmm. writing for the show and then, of course, doing podcast stuff. Um, so I just thought we do kind of like a topical show. We've been, you know, we took a couple of days off, obviously. Mm -hmm. So there's like plenty of news to catch up on. So I, I figured we yes. get into the news. One of the things I like about having Mike on is we get into the news and then the news spirals out into just like, you know, kind of random talking right, stuff. Right. And topics and things like that. And also, uh, I wanted to fight the internet last week because we was like already and prepared for you to be on the show. I, and the internet yeah. was just like, no. And I was like, Oh, it was so weird. It was that thing. Oh, uh, I'm sure y'all are tired of hearing hearing about it, but we're tired of living it. Um, yes. But yeah, for some reason, the internet went out that the specific day Mike was gonna be on, mm -hmm. and then it came on like a couple hours before Mike would be on, mm -hmm. and then it turned off again. So, so we were like, "Oh, cool. We can, I'm gonna hit up Mike. We can do the show." And literally, I couldn't send an email because it went back off. I was just like. Well, I'm glad that didn't go into that's still in the draft. It comes back on like maybe a few minutes before we would have recorded. And we were like, we didn't get the all clear email uh text message or anything from the from the, the cable company to let us know, like, hey, you're good to go. You know what? I think but it lie. never turned back off. Mm -mm. <laughs> so so then it was like, oh, we like wasted the internet night, but whatever. It's, mm -hmm. we made it happen today. And uh, I think they make up time. They was like 12 hours, 24 hours, fuck it, 48. <laughs> So they'll stop calling. Yeah, but we got it working, and that's really what matters. Oh and yeah, they're like a they're like a person leaving the house to meet you. That's like I'm five minutes away in their pajamas. That's the internet <laughs> yeah. people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Leave us alone. It'll be fixed in a day or two. And you're like, okay. And then when it's just like two hours in your mind, you're like, oh, they I saved 22 hours, but really they they probably never it never was gonna be a day. Right. All right. Let's do some coronavirus news. Um. Oh shit. We didn't introduce the show. Um. <laughs> uh. Come on. You guys know, right? <laughs> you guys know the stuff. <laughs> the Blackout Who Tips podcast. I am your host with the most Karen. Yeah. With my co-host Rod. Well, we, we did that part, but <laughs> Dr. you know, find us everywhere you get podcasts. Oh yes, find us everywhere. Uh, We're on iTunes, Stitch Radio, anywhere you got podcasts. Leave us a five star review. Anywhere you can leave us a five star review, and most importantly, tell a friend. I challenge each and every one of you to tell at least one person about us. That's how we grow, that's how you keep this boat afloat. And of course, the official weapon of the show the taser, an unofficial sport, bullet ball. a bullet ball extreme. And I did want to say we're sponsored today. Uh, we are sponsored by Manscaped now to read some some copy <laughs> <laughs> not some copy roses are red violets are blue don't let wild hairs wreck you oh no valentine's day is just around the corner and our sponsor at manscape uh tm are here with the best tools to get you ready for the special occasion that's right so almost that time y'all you only got 12 more days and I mean, I know a lot of us haven't been out. We haven't been seeing people. We've been mm -hmm. in our routine, but Valentine's Day is that time when we go out and we meet people and we see them again. And you don't want to have, you know, the, the 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 hairy situation. 
yeah. that's going to be when, you know, they see that you're all, you know, unkempt down there. Yeah. And for those of you, you know, technology have changed. You still might be like, oh, yo, you got cooties. So you might decide to do the Zoom thing and you want to be, you know, clean when they see you on your, your, your Yeah. Screen. However you want to present, you want to be able mm -hmm. to present. And uh, this Valentine's Day, you can join the over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped, the leaders in below the waist grooming. And they are willing to give you 20% off plus free shipping. All you got to do is put in code TBGWT. It's very important to make sure that you're, you know, scaped up down there. Mm -hmm. And with their new performance package, the 4.0 performance package, that's right. It's got an A GPA, okay? It's passed all the classes. Um, the, and it comes with the lawnmower 4.0. It's electric trimmer, and it's like wireless it's got a light attached to it it is, it is nice i actually used it uh the other day because i know it's called manscape but, but uh, yeah anyone if, can you use know it. if you got hair it does the job mm -hmm. and so i didn't realize how much that light made a difference i turned that light on i could see everything i was like oh i could see it all let's let's go ahead and uh trim this right on up and it's waterproof. So look go mm -hmm. to manscape.com code tbgwt get 20% off plus Free shipping. I I think I think you'll enjoy that for Valentine's mm -hmm. Day. Okay, happy Valentine's, everyone. Now let's do this. News. Look, here we go again. We got variants. Really need to keep a mask on hand and follow the plan. Get the vaccine and second shots. Whether woman or man, black out who tips is doing their part, but the dummies expand. Niggas would rather believe a bunch of misinformation. Fuck y'all idiots not getting shots. Now we gotta regress. If we keep going in this direction, we never can rest. Never can get back to the lives we be living the best. Damn fool, stop the lying, stop the intubation crying. Cause it's your fault that motherfuckers dying. Huh. Damn fool, stop the lying. Stop the ventilator crying Cause it's your fault The motherfuckers dying I do not understand this shit I'm not a fan of this We were like one win From the pandemic championship But fuckers wanna leave it To game seven With Giannis Delta Cool bro Locking forward progression And Chris Middle Fingers to your plans Man day huh. Looks like it's no Drew Holiday for you and your man. I'm sick of black people dying for real. So I'm just writing this new piece to let you know how I feel. Uh, coronavirus, yeah. Fuck that COVID-19. It's unseen. It's creeping in the air for you to breathe, yeah. Huh. So fuck that COVID-19. It's unseen. It's creeping in the air for you to breathe, yeah. Coronavirus. Before you start, you were going to say something, Mike? Oh, I just wanted to share that uh, if, you, if you get into manscaping, you could be a, a man escape artist yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> okay don't don't let yourself escape love oh okay. no landscape this year um all right let's talk about these news articles for coronavirus um idaho's governor activated the national guard to come in and help like uh the hospitals and the staff a lot of states are doing this now mm -hmm. um because staffing is so short and the hospitals are so full um, that they really don't have an option. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta pay attention to all that stuff, man. You know, it's still, it's a state of emergency for a lot of folks out here. So mm -hmm. keep wearing your mask, keep social distancing, be vaccinated, be boosted. Um, let's see our, <laughs> our home uh, County, Mecklenburg County, mm -hmm. um, they accidentally sent out an email that identified the workers who weren't vaccinated. Oh no. <gasps> Yeah, they were. <laughs> I mean, no good. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it was mistakenly sent only to unvaccinated employees, which identified them. And it wasn't like BCC. So I guess. Blind people, copied. Right. Yeah, people could see who I was on it. Mm -hmm, so, you know, um, everybody want to put your name and email address now. <laughs> Yeah, and they said they didn't obviously didn't mean to do mm -hmm, it. Right, because they mm, probably but it was basically telling those people like, hey, um you have to start um taking tests again mm -hmm. because uh we're not mandating that you get vaccinated, but if you choose not to, you need to be tested like two or three times a week. Mm -hmm. Um and what's funny is that I guess in a way it's just outing the va unvaccinated people to each other, you know, <laughs> but oh, uh, you know, I'm sure there's other ways people could get a hold of that list, but right. Yeah. So now everybody knows who it is. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they probably know who you are by just talking to you for a lot of people. Cause you know, when you start asking them questions, all of a sudden people get tight lipped, like people that are vaccinated, they'll, they'll show you the call. I'm vaccinated. Yes. Me, my mama, my kids, my friends, everybody. Yeah. Vaccinated people are like what people think vegans are like. Oh, we get on the nerves. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Cause we'll I, I'm definitely real quick. I definitely am like like whenever we have like a meeting or something on Zoom, it's always like, oh yeah, man, I'm vaccinated. And let me tell you, I'm boosted. And it's like I can't wait to tell you. I wish I had a t-shirt. Like, yes, I'm vaccinated. <laughs> uh, I like the idea that uh you're even show people are doing it on Zoom meetings. They're like, look, I'll show you. Uh, I'm not gonna infect anyone over these uh these wired <laughs> yeah. pathways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You won't get a computer virus, you won't mm -hmm. get a virus from me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm we are virus free over here, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, like we <laughs> Oh, uh, like I, we were in one meeting and somebody said like they were getting over Omicron. This is like beginning of the year. And it's like the whole room was just like, oh, yeah, I'm vaccinated. Let me tell you, I did it. And they're like, I'm vaccinated, too. And they're like, oh, I'm vaccinated. I'm boosted. And the next person is like, <laughs> it's, it really is. It really is the, like what people think uh, vegetarians and vegans do, you know, because we volunteer it. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, you're like, going to oh, know. <laughs> I, mean, I went to Israel to get the fourth shot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. My brother actually has four shots. I'm jealous. I'm like, uh, oh, oh, I wish I could pull that off. Um, ex FDA chief said the vaccine for kids under five could come earlier than expected, mm -hmm. possibly by the end of February. They have, which I think will be a huge relief for a lot of parents. They um, have been working. I know the people that have mm -hmm. been working on that vaccine have been working overtime because a lot of the parents that have, and there's a lot of children in that range, are like, Okay, everybody is vaccinated except for my four year old or my three year old, or I just had, you know, or my one year old. And they was like, if they catch it, the whole house catches it. So it's like, y'all have got to do something about this, particularly in school, you know, in preschool mm -hmm. and things like that, because you take a high chance of infecting the teachers and all that type of stuff. Because children are going to be children. So they're going to touch stuff and, and be in each other's faces and possibly trade masks. They're kids. Yeah, we vaccinate kids for all kinds of other things mm -hmm. without, you know, I understand it's a new vaccine, but we, you know, kids under five get vaccinated all the damn time. Yeah, they get vaccinated from the time they're born. Yeah, and I'm sure the parent. I just think for parents who are vaccinated and stuff, it's probably going to be a big peace of mind for them. Yes. That is fascinating because at first when you started saying this, I was like, how do, you know, the process mm -hmm. of a new vaccine is like, there's tests. And so like they, you know, for adults are like, hey, who wants to volunteer to like best case scenario, you mm -hmm. get healthier sooner than everybody else does. Worst case scenario, we find out it doesn't work. There are side effects. It could be who knows what's going to happen to you. But as an adult, you can consent to that. But for children, how how the do movie. they, I mean, like parents, a parent is yeah. like, yep, yeah. I'll, uh, yeah, I guess uh, try, try my kid, you know, like. Uh, yeah, I, that's what happens. Yeah. I think I, if I was if I was vaccinated, because you know that obviously do kids last. Mm -hmm. So we all got vaccinated. We saw how it worked as it progressed like further, further down in age. By that point, I'm sure their parents are like, Yeah, I want I, I volunteered because I wanted to be first. Right. To be I to wish be I could have got it sooner. I want my kids to be the first wave of kids to be safe. And you know, and so I, yeah. and it, because it didn't really present a lot of adverse health effects and significantly less risk of adverse health events um compared oh, to yeah. covid so i think um that was probably a no-brainer for a lot of people yeah and i when you're talking about the children i think for the smaller children who can't talk for themselves the parents do but for, but for the older children a lot of them actually told them told their parents i want to do it like like yeah, they actually made the conscious decision i was like too many people are sick too many people are dying i don't want to get sick i see my friends die i've seen my teachers die you know so when people bring up the kids i'm like y'all do know death is trauma is just as traumatizing and probably maybe more than covid what is wrong with y'all in california they're trying to pass a law where kids can get vaccinated without their parents consent mm. um because some of the you know some of the anti-vax parents and stuff have children that are like you know i i'm old enough to say i want to be vaccinated right. and these people i, I don't have want, a choice yeah i don't want it then the, so i don't know if that law will pass but right. i just know that it was something they're trying uh oh, covid yeah. patient, uh go ahead i'm sorry mike oh yeah i just just thinking about uh sort of an analogy like i feel like Parents, you know, uh, it's not always the case, but it seems like in general, like progress happens, like like social progress happens, like future generations like uh, have more information and then perhaps become more progressive, like progress is made than their parents sometimes like and parents are sometimes like, let's say with, you know, gay rights or uh, with transgender uh, rights and uh, circumstances these days, like there's parents who are like, how am I going to explain this to my kids? And it's like, well, I feel like the answer is like, your kids are going to probably explain it to you. You know what I mean? Like, and so yes. same thing. Right. 
with uh, with COVID, you know, like how am I like, but kids, uh, it's, so, that, it's so great to hear that, uh, man, people are thinking about right. a lot of stuff and I'm, I'm glad. Good work, kids. Get out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shout out to kids. Shout out to science. Um, COVID patients face, ri face risk after hospital. Um, obvious, you know, um, but if you come down with COVID, especially, um, even if you're vaccinated, but especially if you're not, you know, there's risks that are associated after having COVID. People mm -hmm. may have heart troubles, obviously long COVID, um, things like that. They have substantially higher risk of health problems in the months after being discharged from the hospital following about with uh, COVID-19 researchers in England found. Um, comparing 24,000, 24, basically, COVID-19 patients who survived at least a week after hospital discharge around, um, uh, and, and then they compared it to 123,000 similarly aged people in the general population. They found that COVID-19 survivors had twice the risk of hospital admission or death within the next 10 months. Ooh. Yeah. And compared to people who had the flu around 16,000, COVID patients were thirty seven percent more likely to be readmitted or die due to their right. initial infection. So people say it's like the flu. You don't get out of here, uh, right? Yeah, it's it's so weird that we still have to like do these studies and release these findings because I I believe they're. They, I mean, it's a good thing that they're doing them, mm -hmm. but I believe we only have to do this because it's been such persistent lies and mm -hmm. misinformation mm -hmm. and downplaying of this. Uh, coronavirus that we have to be like, it is actually not like the flu. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're not vaccinated, it's really not like the flu. So like, don't play with it. Right. And these numbers are huge. Like the, the numbers in this uh, study. Mm -hmm. So you can't do the like anecdotal, like, uh, it was 12 people at an Arby's. Like, no, it's, there's never been 12 people in Arby's. <laughs> and, also, <laughs> and also this, you know, this is a medical study of like, uh, over you know 24,000 people and stuff it's a lot of people and i realized that a lot of people uh because you know they have the shortage of the at-home test and so me and roger at the grocery store and i uh was like let's get some uh, cold medicine and the cold and flu medicine i was clean yeah and i was like why is it all gone and roger was like because COVID and the cold and then the flu all had the same symptoms i was like you're right. So people yeah. just buying this stuff up. They, some people may just think they have a cold and they're just taking that versus going to properly test themselves. Yeah. And, and yeah, mm -hmm. it's, uh, I mean, it is like the flu in that it is a thing that causes, you know, you to be sick with symptoms. Like the way that, you know, a horse is like a pony, you know, but it's bigger. It's right. like, uh, it's a bigger, more serious, like a horse is more serious than a pony. You know what I mean? Like if you yes. come down with horse, uh, you know, if you're feeling horse, <laughs> that it's much, it's much worse than if you just have a little pony in your throat, you know? <laughs> and, and then, um, the other thing is, uh, they, in this article, they bring up how children who do sometimes get the rare, um, um, side effect of like ha uh, having heart troubles mm -hmm. from, um e COVID-19 and from having uh it, it, it very rare if you get like some of the vaccine and stuff they they were showing that the heart heart returns to normal at the rare post-COVID illness in kids so um if kids have like that inflammatory syndrome am I I think it's called MIS dash C mm -hmm. if they have that the it takes within about three months for them to recover, but they, it does return to normal for most of these kids. So mm. that's kind of a good thing. You know, I think, you know, people are obviously very worried about children. Mm -hmm. Um, Man, they found a place in Washington state that is like a, just like a fake COVID place. It was so weird, the story. Mm -hmm. And it, it pissed me off because it's like, obviously there's so many conspiracy theory people. You hate to see like, any conspiracy stuff have fuel you know not that conspiracies necessarily require fuel but the conspiracies you you definitely hate to see when something's like damn that sounds like a conspiracy um <laughs> <laughs> but it's in the usa today um that they were writing about this um and it was uh uh, yeah, Washington State filed a lawsuit Monday against a nationwide coronavirus testing chain that operated more than 300 locations across <gasps> the U.S. and collected tens of thousands of tests a day. 
The Center for COVID Control and its primary laboratory, Doctors Clinical Lab, provided invalid, false, and delayed COVID-19 test results to Washingtonians or provided no results at all, according to the complaint from the Washington State Attorney General's office. Wow. The company frequently marked patients as uninsured, even if they were insured. The company's unlawful practices included storing tests in garbage bags for over a week <gasps> rather than properly refrigerating them and backdating sample collection dates so that stale samples would still be processed. Um, employees reported that the company instructed them to lie to patients on a daily basis when Washingtonians complained, complained about their, day, their delayed test results. Why? Why, why is this you? happening? Yeah, I don't. How I, did it happen? Like, like, is the whole thing just a big ass fraud? I'd imagine yeah. why is money somehow? Mm -hmm. yeah, like maybe you get be. paid by how many tests you process mm -hmm. for the government or something. And so yeah, it's that's like why they denied insurance and stuff. So yeah, just so, any, yeah. Oh yeah. So I guess the real question we have to ask here and trying to figure out like the responsibility is uh who's the boss? Yeah. <laughs> Who is the boss? Apparently the boss are um Husband and wife Akbar Saeed and uh Aliyah Siaj. Um, um they are, yeah, they are uh, apparently the co-founders. Uh, um, and they're being sued for violations under the Consumer Protection Act. Mm -hmm. The office said it plans to file a motion for preliminary injunction soon to immediately stop the Center for COVID Control's unlawful conduct. Right. Yeah, and they even have pictures of like the trash bags full of like tests. Employees took that. Um, yeah. Employees are like, we're tired of Oh my God, look at those yeah. bags. Yeah. And you so, walk, supposedly you have it walking around infecting people and you don't even know. Yeah. So that's pretty, pretty terrible. Um, so, uh, I mean, it's good that they caught them. I, this once again, makes you wonder how accurate are our numbers? Um, mm -hmm. You got to hope that this is the only place that's doing this. It probably is. Um, you know, because this is pretty egregious. You would think that not too many people would agree with, not too many companies would be like, you know what we should do? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Not too many companies are like, yeah, we could lie to people and make money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could, or don't test them and just say we did. Um, but yeah, last week they said it was there were suspended test collection operations indefinitely. At its peak, the business was operating hundreds of locations across 26 states, collecting 80,000 tests per day. Oh, <gasps> well, uh, they. Mm -hmm. You know what they say is uh, one man's trash is another person's uh, test that they're not getting accurate results on. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, they got rich off of COVID money. Officials with the U.S. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid visited the testing sites and lab in November, December, and, a doc and documented numerous deficiencies. Um, oh no. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, and so they got paid. Let's see. Yeah, they, the Syed and Siaj, who are married, have attracted attention in recent months for posting images on social media of luxury vehicles and a new $1.36 million mansion. And one post, Syed attributed his wealth to COVID money. Oh, that's how you got caught. You were bragging about that shit online. And people are like, I ain't got my test yet. Get there's rich a, while other people are dying trying. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's the mansion. That looks like a sports car out front, like a really fancy sports car. Oh, wow. You can't be bragging, talking about COVID money, and somebody was like, but my test. It, and, like, even if you were on the up and up, getting rich off of COVID money, not the that's not the flex you want to do. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You, you know, you hey, get... hey, rest of the world where you lost loved ones and stuff. I got rich off of that. I'm out here. Your boy is balling. Don't hate, you know. You better ball in the corner by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so there, um, yeah, that dozens of people across at least 20 states have reached out expressing concerns uh, about Center for COVID uh, Control testing sites. Iowa, Michigan, and New Mexico have received complaints about the sites. The respective attorney general uh, offices. Oh, so those, uh, they might be getting sued in other states too then. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The federal government. Oh, yeah. They going to jail, jail. You, you get these, they turn, you know, these uh, attorney generals from all these states getting up together. They get up with the, with the one from the federal government. Yeah, you're talking about some real time. They had at least 13 testing sites in Washington and did not have a license to operate a business in <gasps> any municipalities in Washington. What? Except for, for one. So they were, they were wilding.
They was out here getting that COVID money. What? Yep. They was like, who who cares if we got the right to be here? Uh, New York Police Department, unvaccinated officers are said to be terminated next month. Let's go. It's getting getting close mm -hmm. down to the wire over there. Yeah, because mm. your, your whole job is to be in people's faces. You need to be yeah. vaccinated. Well, now this is this is like uh, another kind of like, oh man, I I want people to be vaccinated, and I want there to be fewer police officers. So, yeah. what am I rooting for? Yeah, it's really like, who's the punishment though? <laughs> like, like whenever I mean, it's probably just because of my views on just policing in general. But it's always like, who do y'all think y'all are punishing with this stance of? I won't be here to stop and frisk you if you keep this up. You're like, oh yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> it's like don't throw me in the briar patch, you know? Right. Yeah. And also it's it's the um it's to me, there's a correlation with like extreme anti-vax, anti-mask, extreme conservatism. And so whenever I see like cops willing to like put it all out there, like I'm not getting vaccinated over my dead body, I'm like, that's probably for the best. Like it's yeah, it, like even the ones who begrudgingly get it probably can be worked with and probably do a better job policing than the guys who are like, I am definitely not wearing a mask because I don't want to serve or protect you. Yes. And the ha. thing is they complain about how their job is uh, one of the not safest, which I, I can understand that. But you do know that COVID kills you at a higher pace than any other field too. Like, if they go, what's what are you most likely to die from? It's gonna be COVID, and people go, mm -mm. yeah, yeah, they're, it, they're, yeah. Uh, no, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, like, they're basically like, look, I put my life on the line every day, so you can't make me do something that will help me protect myself <laughs> yeah. and everyone. What's next? Bulletproof vest? I don't <laughs> think. <laughs> I'm a um, man. Yeah, and, <laughs> and mean, also other genders. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my favorite, not favorite, but the, uh, ironic. The biggest, uh, the most ironic thing is uh, the New York police. Every time a New York police officer is like killed in the line of duty and mm -hmm. stuff, it always is national news. And there's like a big showing from the police. Like they come out, and there's like a you know a funeral procession and all this stuff. And you see all these cops and stuff, and. And like it doesn't matter if it's like uh, it happens two times a year, then it'll be big a big news two times a year. But already, I think there's been like three New York Police Department officers killed this year from um, being shot or something. And so it's been it's been you know everyone's covering it. And then I think like, but how about all the ones that died of COVID? Right. It's like where's the those your those your brothers and sisters? You know and because like too. when they get shot by somebody, they are like doing press conferences and everything needs to change and the people need to, uh, to understand how hard this job is. And, but like, well, way more of you died of COVID. Where are your press conferences for like, you know what? We do need to wear these masks. Everyone needs to get vaccinated. Stop playing. This is serious. We are dying. Don't you care about our lives? You know, that kind of thing. Like, they come out where are the, where's the like Blue Lives Matter people who are always like popping up with that, that flag with the blue line through it? Like, where are you at when these guys are dying of COVID? Like, you, you show up when they get shot in the line of duty. If there's like a car wreck in, in North Carolina here, if there's a car wreck, they'll do like a, a big expose on the news about a police officer. So many have died of COVID, and we just don't even talk about it or acknowledge it in any significant way. And the cops just refuse to have that same, you know, attitude about we need change. And I know it has to be frustrating for the cops to do care because there are a lot of cops that are like, hey, this is a problem. But, you know, you have the uh, Fraternal Order of Police Officers giving a Batman villain speech on the podium. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what is happening here? Like, uh, yeah. they're not the sense. ones in control, the ones that. I mean, as we can see with all the numbers in almost every department, mm -hmm. the vast majority get vaccinated. So they do. clearly there's an outsize like who gets to talk and who's the representative versus the your reality. average police officer. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, maybe if we deliver the vaccine like in a gun shaped form, <laughs> you know, then they'll be more for it. They're like, well, I don't want the vaccine, but I do want everyone to be able to have guns. Right. Here's what you can do, okay? You shoot somebody, but then it immediately injects you with the vaccine. They're like, okay. We call the vaccine a magic bullet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know, it works both ways because then that means way less people get shot because mm -hmm. there's going to be people like, oh, 
damn it. Yeah. I guess I have to <laughs> use my words. Um, COVID, uh, Omicron news. Let's talk about it. Um, uh, well, all right. So the numbers are going down. Uh, overall cases Yay. in the country are down 30%. Um, from like the highest rates of Omicron, only five states are reporting a significant increase in COVID cases. Infections in children have also dropped for the first time since Thanksgiving, down by nearly a third, um, which a lot of that probably is the breaks. And then I know some schools definitely um, went back to virtual for a while. So mm -hmm. it could be. Yeah, some schools was like, mm -mm, we, you know what? Go ahead and stay at home. For you, mm -mm, Everybody been at the house. We don't know what y'all been doing. Too many teachers are sick. Remote. Yeah, so it could be um, a little bit of that, right? Mm -hmm. But also, once you have it normally for at least a little while, you're pretty clear of not getting reinfected. So, you know, it could just kind of be burning through people. But those are good numbers overall, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, uh, New York's man mask mandate will remain in place until March. Um, and I want to say there was one more thing. Oh, uh, after the election win, Portugal's prime minister tests positive for COVID. Uh, their socialist party leader, Antonio Costa, uh, says he tested positive for COVID-19 two days after his landslide election victory. That's got to suck. Mm -hmm. You know, like you come off of a, a kicking someone's ass and then it's like, oh, you got COVID. It's like, fuck, I can't even do a victory tour. Mm -mm. Probably better that better to get it two days after than two days before or True. Uh, in the mm -hmm. run up to like a nice <sighs> victory yeah. lie in bed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, like, uh, man, that's such a great point, because I bet you that would change some, the way people voted. Like, if you're like, oh, Joe Biden got COVID two days before November 5th, there would I be. I don't people. like my opponents getting COVID. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, that, and then it's like, there'd be people thinking to themselves, like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to vote for him. You might die. I'm not voting for COVID. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a vote for that guy's a vote for COVID. Right. That's how, they, that's how they responded. R. Kelly contracts COVID in, in New York City jail. Huh. So, you know, do you think COVID? No. You know. <laughs> Seems like he's ready. Oh, um, no! What, Karen? Okay. <laughs> Calm down. Let's remix that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he's vaccinated, you know? I don't know. And it does suck because, like, real talk, like, jail is the least amount of social distancing we have in America right now. So, yeah. like, it, I, it's, it's almost... I, I, I'm surprised we don't have even higher numbers in jail. That's because it's overcrowded. There's, you know, very little in the way of resources and people don't really allot anything. But also it's R. Kelly, so I'm not th that broken up. I'm not, you know, I'm not that, I'm not that empathetic. There's, and, like, it's and, like, all right, buddy, well, yeah. that COVID is like the least of your sentence. Yeah, and the thing is, the numbers are possibly higher in jail, but because of how right. we treat and think about jail, a lot of them got sick and they're just like, you ain't got COVID, you just got a cold. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. like you know, they might not have properly test them, all types of stuff. Yeah, who knows, man? I just I just know that if you get it, so social distance, what, solitary confinement? Which is damn yeah. near the worst thing you could do to someone in jail. Like, there's no good choices in jail. Um, the U.S. Army is about to discharge soldiers who don't get COVID-19 vaccine. Let's go. They be sticking y'all with all types of stuff. Y'all don't know what it is. This is where you draw your line. The government right. is like, you know what? You ain't you, you ain't got to be here. I'm appreciating getting to the finish line of um, companies and and groups being fed up. Mm -hmm. I am mm -hmm. appreciating that. But like, I'm, I believe yeah, mandates they, they tired are of these people. I believe they're necessary. Uh, it's unfortunate that they're necessary, but I believe they're necessary in a lot of these places. And it's been proven time and time again that the places that pass these mandates end up getting a much higher level of people vaccinated. Mm -hmm. uh, the airlines being a perfect example of everyone going, they're, they're yeah. going to quit. No one's going to yeah. do it You over my dead body. And then they just return like, yeah, we have 98.9% .9 of people vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And when Omicron came, the, the airlines are like, yeah, no one's dying. Like our employees are living. They may get sick. But they're all alive because they we made them get vaccinated. So yeah, I think they, they was like we was having you know uh, uh, people die every week, and now you know that number is zero. People are getting sick. Yeah, but you know they're not dying. And on top of that, you know people talk about uh, 
excuse me, uh, the airline people, but when they was like, hey, you know what we're going to do? Your insurance is about to go. We're going to charge you like we do smokers. Mm -hmm. And people was like, you know what? I I don't want to pay an extra $200 a month. What I'm going to do is get this shot. The other thing, too, is like, um, it's kind of the cop thing, where it's like, Mm -hmm. how dare you try to make me live? I'll make me live. You want me to? <laughs> How dare you be concerned about my well-being? Yeah, and especially with the low staffing numbers, um, you really can't afford for people not to be vaccinated because I don't think uh, in a lot of these industries there's any. And it sucks to say it this way, but it's the truth that there's any luxury of like a real quarantine, like a real like two weeks you're at home that's a luxury even if you're asymptomatic we're just doing the best thing we can for society we don't want to spread it it's like there's they're like well if we do that there'll be two planes that fly out tomorrow so we're going down to five days so if you do something like that everyone needs to be vaccinated you know and hopefully people paying attention you need to be vaccinated if you're going to be on one of these planes you know they're telling you the, the quiet part out loud which is we can't guarantee you that the people on here don't have some form of like either asymptomatic asymptomatic like thing going on. So get vaccinated, wear a mask. Mm -hmm. All right, last one. There's a new mask in town, everybody. And it's in South Korea. And this is what it looks like. What? (laughs) Hmm. Why does it look like a big pad across her nose? It does look like, oh yeah, I didn't even think, yeah. I'm sorry, I was, I'm a warm out, like, why don't it look like a, it does. Like, it does. like, like a when you pad. having a light day pad. <laughs> so for those who don't see this, uh, or aren't in the chat, can't see this till later, it's like, uh, it goes across just your nose and leaves your mouth um, unprotected. Do, do they not know they call the ear, eye, throat, nose doctor for a reason? <laughs> oh, this is connected. Yeah, I don't understand. You can get a pack of ten for eleven dollars or forty-two cents. Who is you protecting? And it has five star. It has received a five star rating from one hundred eighteen reviews on the website. Mm, how many of them people caught COVID through the mouth? Um, there's been a lot of mixed responses. Uh, it has very responses. Someone said, "Is this a joke?" <laughs> <laughs> Someone said, "Tea. This is like a teapot made from chocolate." <laughs> <laughs> that's good because it's gonna melt uh some people say it's is you know it's great uh an epidemiologist they interviewed said basically it's a strange idea but it's better than nothing but it of course means you're vulnerable through your mouth it's nothing it, it's like the uh like the winnie the pooh style you know like yeah yes. a shirt <laughs> means you're not naked but pants are also uh a lot of the process, yeah. yes yeah, and, and the thing for me is, like, the elite amount of control of breathing out of your mouth you would have to have is just too stressful for me. It's too much. <laughs> I, I feel I feel like I would just have a moment where I forget. And then be like, 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 look, kids, panic. The obvious, because obviously it, quote, unquote, works if your mouth is closed and you're just breathing completely out of, through your nose 100% of the time, all the fucking time. No mistakes, no eating, yes. no drinking, mm. no. But I'm just like people don't function like. I don't that. have that level of perfection in me on at all. I forget all types of shit. So yeah, I'm gonna forget that. I just be sitting there breathing through my mouth. Forget like I probably breathe through my mouth because I'm just like for some reason it's difficult to breathe through my nose. Right, you <laughs> forgot I got it on my face. <laughs> Not to mention the embarrassment. Right. I don't have time to explain to you why this actually does work. Like if it, because then also I can't explain it because then I would get, that's how I get vulnerable to COVID. So it's just people being ah. like, look at this dumbass," And I'm like, actually guys, if I keep my mouth closed, I, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I got it. So yes. Yeah. It, is, yeah. Yes. it looks like uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles accidentally like slipped and, you know, didn't <laughs> put their masks on their eyes all the way right. It's just it's such a bad look. That's terrible. Do they not know the nose and the mouth are connected? So and many this, people missed that point. Honestly, even if it was safer, it just because it looks weird, I don't think people would wear it. Mm-mm. You know, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, just there's a Shane Moss is a comedian buddy of mine, and he had, he had this old joke about uh recumbent bicycles. You know, like where you're kind of like leaning back, and his his impression of them is like, well. It hurts my back, 
but at least I look stupid. Yeah. And, <laughs> right. Like this thing is like the same thing. It's like ineffective, but right. at least it looks stupid. Yes. It's like if it's like in recovering like people probably have some level of argument of like, oh, it's faster or something something that I, you know, we don't know because we don't get in those circles to justify it, but it's hard to justify looking stupid. It's just hard. Mm-hmm. Even even when you're like, guys, actually, this is better. You're like, I don't know, man. You look dumb. You know? Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get to other news. We got through the coronavirus news. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, Joe Rogan's in the news. Uh-oh. He has responded to all the controversy. Okay. Everyone's taking their music off of Spotify. They don't like them spreading vaccine misinformation. And it's like Neil Young and uh, d- d- Joni something. Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell. Yeah. And uh, India Ari, I saw, was one. So he has responded and he says he promises to b- balance things out in the future. So every time he spreads misinformation, he'll then have someone on to spread not misinformation soon after. Which hit information. Solved. The opposite of misinformation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's kind of an interesting quote unquote compromise. Um, and it still kind of, you know, doesn't prove that uh I think it does so Spotify released their like internal rules for like judging podcast content. Mm-hmm. And technically he's never broken the rules. Mm-mm. Um, which is which is interesting, it says a lot about the rules. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> like, like I don't like. What do you got to do to break the rules? Nothing yeah. in the rule book that says a dog can't be your COVID doctor, <laughs> right? Exactly, Doctor Fuzzy, come on in. We got some <laughs> questions to ask you. Bark twice if uh... <laughs> Doctor Smooches, come on in here. All right. So um, they're gonna put a content advisory on podcast episodes that contain discussions about the vaccine and the virus. But once again, that's kind of weird because it's. That sounds like you're gonna be putting advisories even when there's not misinformation. Right. Like warning, like warning, they're talking about COVID. That's not really doing anything. Mm-mm. Well, that's like uh on, on Instagram or Facebook sometimes, like if I go to make a post or share a post that mentions the word vaccine or COVID or anything, it, it's like, are you sure you wanna do this? Do you wanna <laughs> go to this? I mean, it is good that they do sometimes offer a link to like a mm-hmm. website with the official information and maybe that will be a part of this as well but yeah it would it would certainly not be great if it was just across the board like the way that it used to be i mean i don't know if this conversation's happened in a while but in comedy sometimes there's like comedy that's racist and then there's comedy that's racial like if it's right. about race that's not the same thing as being you know right. racist but some people don't uh some people see things in black and white and don't really get as nuanced (laughs) yeah and then um i feel like in a way this is a larger extension of what we watched happen in our lifetimes on cable news which is um cable news would have an expert on and then a complete troll yes and then they would be like no you two fight you know, and like the host is just sitting there like, I hated that shit. That is interesting. So global warming doesn't exist, according to you, man, we found on the street wearing a tinfoil hat. And uh, you, scientist, who is leader of the WHO, or whatever, the World Global Warming Association. Right. So With all these degrees and letters behind your I name. I notice all the stats, figures, graphs, scientific mm-hmm. research. That's interesting. But tinfoil hat, man, how do you react to that? And that ah. is kind of what he's doing, mm-hmm. you know, except I guess the complaint has been he's just only been doing 10 for at people or mostly been doing 10 for at people and his solution will be to bring on more expert types afterwards but i feel like that it's still kind of not really a, an effective way to combat what he was doing like i said it's like a parental advisory that's yeah. how i feel they like you know what here's something just to let you know and it's up to you if you decide to listen past this point. now i will say this the one thing he did say that uh if 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 there would be if there's going to be change the one thing he said that would be change is that he just uh, sorry but it is um he will start to research the topics before he talks about them 
Oh, what a what what an idea! Uh, <laughs> I might what start. a novel coronavirus idea. <laughs> oh yeah, so he's gonna have on not just tinfoil hat people, but also aluminum foil hat people, perhaps saran wrap hat people. You know, <laughs> come on, all they all Tupperware. need to be represented. Yeah, yeah it's so parchment paper hat people. Come on, let's do them all. It's so uh, the bar I, is so low. Uh, I do feel like he he is trying to like he is trying to learn like right. he he's not he's not just he's not out to i don't think anyone is really just like haha i'm gonna be like the biggest asshole for no reason like mm -hmm. he i don't think that i think he truly like believes like the in the path that he's on like and, and i've seen you know i've seen his comedy over the years and i feel like there's things in his comedy that are like valuable, meaningful, like thoughtful, philosophical concepts, as well as other things. Like he mm -hmm. he's kind of been presenting, you know, both sides of a lot of like the a smart side and a dumb side, you know, for <laughs> for as so many of us are like none of us, you know, until we're, you know, divinely enlightened omniscient Buddhas. Like mm -hmm. none of us has all of the information. None of us has uh, a, a sole unique claim to objective reality. And so, I mean, on the face of it, what he is saying, like it is a step in the right direction to be like, right. I'm not only going to have uh, garbage, I'm going to have a diet of garbage as well as what other people say is nutritional. So right. that's like only 50% garbage moving forward. You right. Know? <laughs> it's interesting that you say that. One, that would be a great idea for a double album. Like, smart side, dumb side. You know, yeah. and one one could be jokes that you looked up and you know all the words and the research. And then the other one could just be like, I don't know anything about this, but here's my jokes. But, um, the other thing is, um, for me, I feel like it says a lot that he was doing so many shows uninformed and that he brought on people that, you know, are known to be misinforming people, which essentially makes you misinformed. Like, like there's no way to not be mis. You're like, I'm here to learn from the guy who makes things up. And if you have eight people on there or when there's no people on there, it's just you, you, you are more likely to present misinformation now because that's what you've been absorbing as your like, Hey, I'm unbiased. I'm not picking a side. I'm just here to learn. I'm asking questions. And so you're not going to be able to help yourself. It's like tomorrow, if we do another episode of the blackout test, Mike might not be here, but we'll always be like, we had a conversation with Mike. So we'll be like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. In Seattle, you can go get, the vegan restaurants and da da, mm -hmm. but if Mike would have been out here like coronavirus ain't real, we'd be here tomorrow. Like, yeah, I mean, Mike says it's not even real. So, like, what are we worried about? <laughs> so, like, I so that's the part. If there's gonna be any change, it would only come from. And I, I hope he's serious because I honestly think he's too big to to fail. Right? He's not mm -hmm. going to not have a show as much mm -hmm. as people wish that. Oh yeah, he's and he's not. And 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 wow. People don't know enough about podcasting. If he's not on Spotify, his footprint will only get bigger. People just don't understand how it works. Right. But um, like, so everyone would be cheering like some type of moral victory and then he would fucking blow up because mm -hmm. cause right now you can only go to Spotify to get this. When he's just free at the end of his deal and you could go to like TikTok, YouTube, anywhere, like you just pick up a phone and he's on there, he's going to have an even bigger reach. So I would hope He's sincere about learning shit on his own because that's the only positive thing that can come out of this. Because if he learns it on his own and he does research when he has someone with misinformation on, maybe he'll challenge them. Because that's the one thing I've noticed in the clips I've seen. It's always like the misinformation goes unchallenged. And then the, the actual doctors and experts get challenged by him. And I'm like, well, that's that's totally unbalanced. That's not really the, like you're skeptical of like you know, Sanjay Gupta, You're, then you gotta be like, I don't know about all this vaccine nonsense. But then when some other guy comes on, he's like, I mean, it's causing impotence in the children. You're like, oh, really impotence? You know, there's no like, I don't know about that. And that's where the balance is missing, uh, 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 in my uh, uh, opinion. Prepubescent um, children are not able to get erections? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, yeah, well, you know what? Maybe, maybe. Um, <laughs> not, not in my child. 
<laughs> my child gets big erections. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's man, but I will say I really did not know so many people would marshal their resources to be like, you need to be accountable. Cause like doctors, like he just had, I guess, and maybe that's a thing. He's still just himself. Mm -hmm. So maybe he'll never, and I, I mean, I can relate to this. Oh uh, shit. I'm sure all three of us can relate to it. You can't really see yourself as like an institution, mm -mm. you know, like if you, we call those people narcissists, but the rest of us <laughs> can't really see ourselves as having that big an impact right now. I feel like I'm having a conversation with my wife and Mike. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't feel like I'm having a conversation with the mic, the world, my wife, everybody that's down. So, you know, if something happens where we say something and people write in later, like, Hey, that's actually not true. Or, uh, what about this other scenario you didn't think about? I'd be like, Oh yeah, I was, I didn't, I wasn't thinking of you mm -mm. necessarily at that moment. And with someone like Joe Rogan, maybe that's his thing is like, I'm just having these reckless conversations. Like I would have with anyone. Right. It's like, well, it's different having a reckless conversation when they're paying you a hundred million dollars and people are listening. It's just, someone's going to have to come check it. That's why we have an FCC and all that other stuff to be like, Hey, Hey, Oprah, can't you just throw the beef industry under the bus like that. You gotta, you gotta have some facts, you know? All right. Um, Whoopi Goldberg was suspended from ABC. I was hearing about this. This has been big all over my like social media. It's a lot of she got suspended. A lot of hot opinions. So apparently, she said, um, and in full disclosure, guys, me and Karen are black, and Mike Kaplan is Jewish. So mm -hmm. we're the we perfect <laughs> people to be covering this. We needed an <laughs> we needed an expert. <laughs> so, uh <-huh. laughs> so uh she was um originally talking about the Holocaust on The View. Mm -hmm. And she yeah. said that it wasn't like racist or like it wasn't about race, which obviously every, everyone who's uh, read that chapter and and, uh, <laughs> and it, 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 everyone who's like had a uh, high school social studies was like, it was about, it was kind of about race though. Like it's you not- know, uh, Hitler said <laughs> that the Nazis, that white people were the master group you know right, everyone yes. like there was no mention of race that i recall uh, i will say i i, yeah. I pulled up because i was at my lunch with my mom today and she asked yeah. me about it she's like do you hear about this Whoopi goldberg thing and i was like i did but i haven't like fully researched it because i don't mm -hmm. i don't i don't really I, i'm not following all news Whoopi goldberg but i did uh pull up uh like her most recent tweet can i can mm -hmm. i read yeah it's absolutely. just so she says uh this is i think so it must have happened monday uh, mm -hmm. So Monday on the show, she said this thing. And Monday night, she tweeted, on today's show, I said the Holocaust is not about race, but about man's inhumanity to man. I should have said it's about both. As Jonathan Greenblatt of the Anti-Defamation League shared, the Holocaust was about the Nazis' systematic annihilation of the Jewish people, who they deemed to be an inferior race. I stand corrected. The Jewish people around the world have always had my support, and that will never waver. I'm sorry for the hurt I've caused written with my sincerest apologies, Whoopi Goldberg. And so mm -hmm. like that, that seems like a good, a good apology as far mm -hmm. as apologies go. Mm -hmm. uh, I did and see somebody was... point out she didn't apologize on the show, but that's in part probably because she's now suspended from the show. Right. Right. And I think she, um, she did, uh, I think go on the show and um what was it oh no they brought, maybe they brought the uh yeah they brought jonathan greenblatt the ceo of the anti-defamation league um on there to discuss her comments and even he was like yeah absolutely like she made a mistake she misspoke but it was a great apology we like we accepted which is always kind of like an interesting thing to have like that job to be like uh, jewish people we yeah <laughs> We all agree. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I'm on board as well. So uh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, which is, which is like always an interesting job, but it was, but the thing that there was like pretty much everybody who uh, would have been like offended by it for the most part was like, we understand where she's coming from, but we appreciate the apology and yeah, like learning teachable moment. Let's move on. 
and then she got suspended. Like it was like, like it was like a beat between like it was like, hey y'all, I really fucked up. I'm sorry. Here's my complete apology. And then people were like, okay, yeah, well, all right, crisis averted. She she didn't double down. She didn't do the thing so many people do. Or like, I'm the real victim here. And you know, like Sharon Osbourne, how can I be racist? Like she's like, I fucked up. Uh, Jewish people always have my back. I've always been an ally. I fucked up. I'm sorry, everybody. And then it was like, well, guess what? Two weeks off because you fucked up real bad. Um, and I think that's why it's been like a divisive suspension. Um, of course, people are brought up like Megan McCain. Uh, and I don't know if Megan McCain has never been suspended or something. I, I, I didn't keep up enough with it. The facts yeah, on that. A lot of people are like, yeah, she said some wild things. And she, you know, if she's been suspended, it hadn't been like this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... Yes, it's it's just been interesting to see like the fallout from it. Um, she hasn't said anything since, and internally, supposedly, ABC is divided. Like, there's people there who are like, "Y'all went too far." Like, she did apologize, um, and uh, uh, the people who have been exacerbating it have been people who are like really right wing, like Joe Scarborough mm -hmm. and Meghan McCain are the ones being like, "This is disgusting." Mm -hmm. She and it's like. Y'all say disgusting shit a lot. <laughs> like, like, where's the same energy for for like like some of the stuff that like Meghan McCain said about like black people in America or said about Colin Kaepernick? Like, where's the same like level of like like when you're saying it, you're never like, you know, now I think about it, I'm kind of disgusted. It's like it's like it feels like gotcha. Like it's not really mm -hmm. about her caring about Jewish people mm -hmm. as much as like, ooh, she made a mistake and she's the liberal person on the show. Well, now it's my turn. And it feels kind of like it feels like a game almost. Like oh, we got Whoopi. Absolutely. And I mean, here we are. Like I my mom watches The View. I don't mm -hmm. watch The View. Like I don't know if y'all watch The View. Like mm -hmm. we're not we're not the target market mm -hmm. or yes. like uh, kind of any it's it, it's sort of it's all like iconic it like represents you know larger things but like and so and people you know turn this into a discussion of like it's so strange also like you know the the cancel culture uh you know conversations that happen where you know uh let's say right-wing people are like hey you can't you can't make me not say a thing that i want to say and also but when you do it like you should mm -hmm. not be able to, you know, I was talking about for right. me, like I, yeah. freedom of my speech. I'm yeah. allowed to say whatever I want See, and I, you got to stop saying what you're saying because if you're saying things, then how do I say anything that I want to say? And <laughs> so it is, it is pretty ridiculous, but yeah, in, I feel like to have a nuanced conversation, there's like two things. This is mm. a specific situation where one person said a thing, apologized for it, and now there are consequences and ripples and people are like, can you believe that this and this and this, and then, you know, piling things on top of each other and conflating them, which is also now what I'm doing in a way too. <laughs> but it, like, it seems like in this situation, like, yeah, she said a thing. Uh, she understands that it wasn't a great thing uh, or it wasn't like the nuanced thing. Like, cause you can also understand the spirit. I understand what she meant. I understand right. what she's talking about, but it also of course did have sort of like an, an all lives matter ish flavor to mm -hmm. it uh when like the holocaust is a very specific thing and yeah. it and to say oh it's just just in it you know there's inhumanity happening like there's no way to cover you know the 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 totality of the holocaust uh and what it means and its horrors in like a sound bite but that's yeah we're like a sound bite based society is the sound bite that i'll offer us right now yeah, and, and we don't have um, we don't necessarily have a venue like that where you can be like, well, let's discuss race versus religion versus like caste and ethnicity and all this. Not on the view. Yeah, yeah, that's not. They not. They not. Like if they started talking that. like that on the view, everybody be like, uh, "Come on, guys, come on." Her, everybody heard up and her, say good or yeah, bad. Thumbs on. up, thumbs down. Oh, what let, are we? Let's get on to the cooking segment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, a two week suspension isn't like the end of the world, no. and it doesn't even sound like it's like they're not gonna pay her or something. It just sounds like, um, 
you're hot right now and right, we, we they, need to wait for things to calm right, down they, they, and i guess you'll probably get her on air apology in two weeks because you know i don't think my guess is she won't go sharon osborne or megan mccain and be mm -mm. like you're the ones who are wrong I, I really feel like she meant like yeah i fucked up that's that's on me um and you know my bad yeah and i also i think uh from her perspective you know, she apologized and I think she'll come back. She apologized and she'll just keep going. Cause you know, she's one yeah. of the older cast members, you know, she's been in this game for a very long time. You and know? also like people believe apology, people accept or believe public apologies based on how much they like you anyway. Agreed. You know, like, it's not really like, uh, if this was, even if it was somebody you hated and they wrote the same words verbatim, most people are going to be like, well, I don't like that person. So it's bullshit, you know? So it's, just, it's really just a matter of whether you like it or not. I've already seen people that brought up like old comments she made, you know, decades ago or over a decade ago about Roman Polanski's accuser and uh, the time Ted Danson, I think his name, did like blackface and she was like there. So like some people were bringing up shit. They're like 30 years ago, you weren't. And it's like, uh, I don't think you were going to accept her apology any like i don't think there's anything she could have said <laughs> like she wouldn't need to go apologize for that like, she was like well actually before i talk about my latest comments i would like to get to some 30 year old comments like is so i think some people are just gonna always be on our ass and i know this might sound stupid but i'm asking anyway what exactly is the anti-defamation league um i can look it up for you exactly but uh in shorthand it's uh the like stop talking bad about you people jewish people okay like did you, you just say people. jew people uh, no i said <laughs> you people oh, God, no. I, mean, <laughs> I mean jews i mean oh god uh but yeah um it, listen karen people are so racist they had to call it the adl so they wouldn't know it was jewish people that's how <laughs> I, mean. I figured out that that's maybe what it was but i was like well they might represent all types of people so let me like, be sure like colored people is in naacp you know yes. black is in black lives matter but adl is like oh who are those good people fighting on behalf of the jewish people that's nice right there it's like it's us it's the jewish people don't tell nobody okay um, yeah, we, but we're yeah. against defamation of all kinds of people. So, uh, like, feel free to come to us uh, with any any anti defamation needs. We're a league uh, okay. for all. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought it was like across the board. No, like, uh, but specifically Jewish people, though. But um, <laughs> the mission of the ADL is to stop the defamation of the Jewish people and to secure justice and fair treatment for all. So, uh, okay. So yeah, um, Jewish people and all. Yeah. So I mean, look, if I'm getting defamed. I know yeah, where I'm I know, going. I know where I'm going. Ah, okay. Ah, ah. I'm going straight to the NAACP. But then when they say we're busy, going to the, the ADL. All right. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, man. I, I thought it was interesting because um I don't think I really saw any like Jewish people, unless I guess maybe they were like Fox News, like conservative type stuff. But I, I never really saw any Jewish people really that mad at Whoopi. They were just like, come on, Whoopi. And then she was like, my bad. And they were like, all right. Like, it wasn't like, but I guess the story and the way that it's portrayed, it's once, you, once you do the two-week suspension, it kind of becomes like, mm -hmm. man, those Jewish people were mad. I'm like, I did. I don't think that was the case, everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, no. and also, I want to live in a world where maybe Whoopi does two weeks as a some sort of punishment. We go... Okay, like you know what I'm saying? Like they didn't kill her. They didn't, you know, like we don't have to do cancel culture thing. It's like it's not it's not so hard of a thing to do. And it maybe the lesson is like, I would just be careful how we talk about that in the future or something. Mm -hmm. Like I hope it doesn't turn into this whole thing. And and it's really up to Whoopi, like as long as she doesn't come back and say like they canceled me y'all then yeah then i, I, think I don't we'll think fine. she will and she's been on people list for a very long time so yeah. it's just one of those things where they like you said they got the type of thing yeah yeah like the i mean i do think the the wording of the apology does like uh, like you said if if people don't like her if people don't like her ideologically they right. can they can say like oh she's just saying what she right. has to say to get out of it because but here's the thing is if people think that about her that's more about them 
than right. her. If she, like she's just, you know what people do? They say whatever they need to. Like that's right. what you do then. Like right. this, exactly. this truly does seem like uh, <laughs> as authentic. I mean, it. I accept. Right. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> like, we'll see. Well, you like, and that's also the thing too. Or like. Um, that is in America anyway, because I can't, I've never lived outside of America. But from an American perspective, mm -hmm. a lot of that is about having uh, yourself affirmed the ability to accept an apology, right? So um, we see it all the time. Like Asian people are considered like a model minority, right? There's like a bunch of stereotypes, but mm -hmm. many of them are positive, still dehumanizing stereotypes, yes. but they're more positive. So like the odds of a comedian making a joke about Asian people and then Asian people being like, all right, dude, that was fucked up, but it's cool. It's higher. I feel like with us as black people, we always feel like we're near the, the bottom of the caste system. So we're the quickest to be like, I don't trust that apology. It's like, <laughs> well, clearly they meant it. It's like, mm, nah, it's gotta be something else to it. And I think- yeah, we're the most sensitive right, to it with, because, with, of, because of history. And in America with Jewish people, like in the way we had this racial caste system, mm -hmm. in order to like be shitty to, to black people, it was like, we accept you as white as long as you, you know, you, you fuck with us, you gonna, you gonna help us get these black people. And what's funny is throughout the years, Jewish and black people have had probably the best alliance. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. But it's always like that, like, you heard it okay. here. We're black no. now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so black people, so like a black person making this mistake and Jewish people being the ones that be like, it's actually not that big a deal. Feels like that's part, those, that's the two that's, that was more likely to happen mm -hmm. than even if it was the other way around, just cause it's like, yeah, those are the oh, two yeah. closer, closest cast uh, right now in entertainment and stuff. So oh, it, it makes a lot more sense that, uh, a, a black person who in America, you know, right. has experienced what it's like to be a black person in America can imagine, you know, like, mm -hmm. like you said, you know, in, in the caste system, like if the, the lighter your skin in America, the, you know, obviously there's exceptions, but right. the, for simplicity, the easier you have it, or like right. the, the, the darker your skin, the more difficulty right. uh, gets added to your life. So the harder you have it, the more you can understand uh, what it's like to be anyone who doesn't have it as hard as you. Uh, right. But if you have it easier, it's harder. You you have less capacity to imagine how bad it can be for somebody who has it worse than you if yep. you've never experienced it. And it's probably why she apologized so fast. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like immediately like walk me. backstage. <laughs> like you walk backstage, everybody goes, hey, you know, it, it, was, it was racist, right? You're like, what? The Holocaust, it was also racist. Oh shit, it was. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's on that's on me. Um, the New York Times bought Wordle, everybody. I know Ooh. I've never played, but I you know that game you've been playing at midnight uh every day and then having nothing to look forward to the rest of the day. They <gasps> bought it and they said initially it won't be behind a paywall, but they did frame it and say initially they didn't say forever yeah, they probably have commercials so i don't know if we're gonna like have to all sign up for the new york times keep playing word or if everyone's gonna just well, uh there's other off. there's other versions now there's absurdal and nerdle <laughs> and loodle and uh i've been i've been researching it <laughs> <laughs> yeah loodle seems like it would be easy it's all cuss words right but because there's so few of them you have to, mm. you have to like, make, if you have a running list of them, if you come up with all of the, the five letter cuss words, then, then it becomes easy. But if you can't think of them, you're like, what, mm. what word has a P and a U, you know? <laughs> well, um, yeah, I, I, it'll be interesting because I really have enjoyed that game. And it's one of the weird, nice things left on the internet. Like, it's not a thing that I see people like actively spoiling and people post their scores. They don't tell you what the word is every day. Um, and then when people post it, you can kind of see their logic. If you solved it, you can be like, oh, they must have had the you sometimes you can tell the word, like, oh, you said cloud, because I said cloud, and it was could, and you it took you one more turn to get it. <laughs> you know? So I think it's really adorable. And I hope the New York Times doesn't like, you know, ruin it or anything. So ah, what a nice time. Okay, glad they've been uh -huh. paid because. Sound like somebody was trying to rip them off. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
well, there were people making clones and stuff and putting in the app store. Like it, it was a thing for a while. Um, all right, let's do uh another segment, okay? Let's uh let me look at my time here. All right, cool. Let's do some it's hard to play guest the race with Mike. He's not racist and doesn't like the, <laughs> the guesses. <laughs> So, <laughs> I, guess. I like guessing. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's we'll do some guess the race with Mike, uh, and then uh, we'll we'll be saying purple and stuff, and then we'll just we'll just laugh. I'll guess there Jewish we- every time. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you're not canceling Mike, okay? <laughs> but no two week suspensions over here. All right. Nope. It's time to guess the race. 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 That's right, y'all. It's guess the race time. The game where we go all around the globe, find different articles, and guess the race of the people involved. Uh, and Karen and Mike Kaplan will be playing along today, guessing the race of the people involved. And the chat room plays along as well. And they're all racist. Mm-hmm. So all that stuff we were just talking earlier, it's right out the window. All right, <laughs> it's just for the interest of comedy. It was like back to being racist. All right, let's go to our first story. A golden corral in Pennsylvania turned into a fight club when an all-out brawl broke out la- late last week, and it came because it came, the brawl broke out because of the cut of the buffet steak. Oh, they cut it. Daniel versus. You know, perpendicular. I don't. What I. I don't get it. What's we mad about? Well, apparently they ran out of steak. Mm. Oh shit! Yeah, never also see tonight, that. A brawl at the buffet. This is Eyewitness News at six, and we are streaming live on CBS yeah. News Philly. Buffet must Hello, be jumping. Hello, good evening, everyone. I'm Yuki Washington. And I'm Jessica Cartelia. Friday night out turned into a melee in Ben Salem at a Golden Corral restaurant. Now police are trying to figure out how it all started. Eyewitness <sighs> News reporter Matt Petrillo is in Ben Salem tonight. Matt. Well, I talked to a man who posted that video online. He says he was told that fight broke out after the buffet here ran out of steak. Video shared with Eyewitness News shows punches being thrown and high chairs flying as a fight breaks out inside the Golden Corral in Ben Salem Friday evening. Ben Salem police confirm the brawl may have involved more than 40 people and (gasps) happened following an argument among some customers. Officers are still looking into what caused the argument. I've never seen nothing like that in in Golden Corral before. This man who used to work at the Ben Salem Golden Corral says he was told by a current employee about the initial altercation. From what I heard, it was over stake. Apparently somebody cut in line. His friend heard the same details. There was a shortage of steak and yeah, two parties like were involved. Take a close listen and a man can be heard saying, all I wanted was some steak. <laughs> Golden <laughs> Corral <laughs> won't email asking if a lack of steak caused the melee. <laughs> but JK Hospitality, the Golden Corral franchise wrote in a statement, Thankfully, no serious injuries have been reported. The safety of our guests and co-workers is our top priority. Oh, my gosh. Meantime, people we showed the video to blame the customers. Not respect for people or for property or anything. Disgusted that people would even do that in a public place when there's children around. Our community should be safe for families. And police tell us they're still trying to identify the person who started that food fight, but say... The person could face several charges, including simple assault. Live in Ben Salem at Petrillo CBS. All right, let's go around the room. There's a lot of steak on this. First, first thing, <laughs> as a vegan, I uh, I recuse myself, and um, <laughs> no, I'll say also, you know, like when I was a kid, I remember there'd be like cartoons or things. I don't know if this ever happened in real life, but uh, what a what a great tragedy that sometimes if you get like a black eye in a fight. Like the thing you do is put a steak on it, and there's no way to do that here. <laughs> but with right. the shortage, no, uh, no I mean, left. I I couldn't. It, they said Pennsylvania, so I feel like mm-hmm. I mean I know there's like there's that it's not Pennsylvania is not like monolithically white, but I'm gonna say white. All right, care. I'm gonna say black. That person sounded like they was highly upset about that steak. <laughs> okay, I bet you it was well done too. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Tastes like rubber. Okay. Uh, my first my first word guest tomorrow in Wordle will be black. You hear the disgusting the voice, and they said people, the perpetrators were black. So they're going by the context clues of the people that the news showed the video to. This has got to be safe for families. <laughs> good, good old fashioned white American families. <laughs> <laughs> this used to be a good neighborhood. Um, <laughs> Dark uh, meat, darky, white, black people only fight over shrimp and crabs. Oh, no. Black, white audacity, white caucasity, white ridiculousness. All those white testimonials, black, black, screaming. Okay, wait. They didn't call them thugs, white, and black. <laughs> the correct answer is, uh, let's see. Mike went white. Karen mm -hmm. went black. The mm -hmm. correct answer is they were black. I and apologize. Now we'll, yeah, you're suspended for two weeks. And we got, <laughs> the, we got the boob mic in the chat room that got it wrong. All right. Okay. That's what they sound like when they ran out of steak. Oh, man. <laughs> They're like, we're out of steak, everybody. He cut line. They're like, boo. We're just um, on a steakcation, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and there, there's the, you can literally see the baby chairs being thrown. <gasps> oh, no, the high chairs. Yeah, they hit people with high chairs. Like, oh, no. I might be able to show y'all the video if I can see how to, I don't know how to close this part. But, um, yeah, there's like a, a, a video of it and everything of like, um, yeah, okay. So I'll show y'all the video on mute. But they were like literally hitting each other with, with like, chairs and stuff um so you can see them throwing the chairs mm. and then <gasps> taking it and hitting people over the head on top oh no some people <laughs> this must have been at the church because some people were in suits like you know that's like the after church buffet is like a tradition for the black folks man we Hello. love that yes also 40 people inside a golden corral in a pandemic just sounds like not good <laughs> it just sounds it just sounds dangerous. I don't know that it is, but like, I don't know why in my mind I'm just like, nobody's vaccinated in Golden Corral. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, that's just the kind of Golden Corral clientele they got. Um, all right, let's go to the next story, everybody. All right. Um, thief threatened worker with crossbow outside of D.C. Trader Joe's. A whole nother turn out my Trader Joe's. Uh -huh. Crossbow, Crossbow Trader Joe's white. I mean, right. are we? <laughs> uh, police made an arrest after two people allegedly walked into a Trader Joe's in Northwest DC before one of them stole a wine bottle and then used a crossbow to threaten a worker who confronted them. What? I wouldn't die over no two buck chuck. I know that's no, like, you can have it. Take it. Uh, uh this happened at 1 p.m. on Sunday. Oh, in broad daylight. Listen, if you need wine at 1 p.m. on Sunday, you're either communion or <laughs> you got a problem, okay? Like, I'm still in wine at 1. Uh, a store employee at the Trader Joe's located at the 1900 block of 14th Street Northwest saw one of the suspects conceal a wine bottle inside of a red bag. That suspect then exited the store without paying for the item. When the store worker confronted them outside the establishment, the suspect pulled out a black crossbow and pointed it at the employee. The worker went inside the Trader Joe's and contacted the police. Uh, police released images uh, that show, I can't describe the images, but they showed that the people are there. Um, and they later announced that 26-year-old Isis Jones of Northwest DC was arrested and charged with assault with a dangerous weapon and theft. All right, Karen, guess the race. Of the people that stole from Trader Joe's. Still up from Trader Joe's. I, I got to go white. Karen's going white. Mike? Oh, yeah. I was already, I mean, from the get-go, assuming Trader Joe's and Crossbow. And then throw in wine. And they brought their own bag. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, They're being reasonable. According to the chat room, black Crossbow, white Perp, mm -hmm. white Zinfandel. Come black, on, Zinfandel. Black, sadly. Daryl Dixon needs his three buck Chuck. <laughs> uh, that name screams Negress. Van Helsing White, Black and Fabulous. Isis D serves. The correct, <laughs> the, 
And last, Isis Jones, uh, is that what her name was? I, so I've already forgotten it. Uh, yeah, Isis Jones. That was her last name, Isis Jones. All right. The correct, the last, I mean, the correct answer is Karen and Mike both went white, and you both missed it. They're black. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they're getting rowdy, rowdy. Uh, Glad dude. we're in this together. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we in this boat together. And uh, that's them. I, honestly, I would have never guessed I, crossbow and black. I would have, mm -mm. I guess in my own way, I'm still racist because I don't, that, I know black people aren't a monolith, but you start talking about crossbows, I'm like, that's the, the area of whiteness that we're in. So um, I also like that they're holding hands because, you know, they're going to go drink that wine together. <laughs> they're going to recycle. They're going to have a relaxing, you know, walk in the park. It's going to be a nice night. They care about the earth. Yeah. What an amazing new era we find ourselves in where it's right? we're not just one race that can threaten people with crossbows, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you love That's Martin Luther King's dream. dream, you know? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the bonus round. Um for I guess the race with Karen's one and one and Mike's zero oh and two. What time is it? It's time to guess the race. 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 That's right, everybody. Triple the points in the third round. In the Ooh. final round, I guess the race. Uh, Karen's up one, uh, one, one to O for two, but it's anyone's game, mm -hmm. depending on how this last round goes. Okay. Mm. Wanted man. People want to find the fit felon as cops bombarded with thousands of messages over wanted appeal. Cops have been bombarded with thousands of messages after posting a police appeal for a man branded as a fit felon. Ah! The mug shot of Jonathan Cahill. 37, who is wanted on prison recall, has attracted more than 8,000 comments, mostly from smitten women. Oh, the hell I'm Cahill was... What were the comments? Lock me up, throw away the key! <laughs> <laughs> Cahill was released from prison last September after serving part in the sentence for burglary. North uh, West Yorkshire police believe he has breached the term of his release and has been recalled to prison. He's been dubbed as the UK's version of hot felon Jeremy Meeks, whose mugshot went viral in 2014. Oh, yeah, Felon Bay. I remember him. Mm -hmm. The former convict was signed by a top modeling agency as soon as he was released from prison. Maybe that'll happen with this guy. Uh, cops shared a picture of Cahill on social media in a bid to find him, but now admirers are hoping to catch him as well. <laughs> you better hope I catch him with the cops, dude. Uh, someone commented, I hope he's not out in the cold. I have a spare room if he wants. Oh, and a pair of handcuffs. I told you. Another one said, your child's very own Jeremy Meeks. His mugshot earned him right bragging rights. Uh, someone wrote, oofed. Talk about a fit felon. While another one joked, what's his crime? Breaking hearts or houses? <laughs> uh, Christ almighty, he could hide under my bed. <laughs> <laughs> someone added you're not having him back i'm currently looking to, to handcuff him to my bed someone said if i find him can i keep him and another one commented he was in prison for burglary burglary must be because all those hearts he stole uh however not everyone is impressed one writing aim higher ladies no wonder half of you have terrible relationships and can't figure out what's going wrong sounds like a hater, hater in the house <laughs> Another one wrote, I must need to go to Spec Savers. It must be like their lens hut or whatever, mm -hmm. because I can't see what everyone seems to be missing. Uh, a spokes when a spokesman for West Yorkshire police said officers are continuing inquiries for the we're trying to find them. Uh so and they also say he, he's believed to currently be residing in Wakefield. So ladies. Uh all right. Ah! Guess the race of Mr. Jonathan Cahill. I'm going to say black. Karen's going black. What about you, Mike? Okay. Well, uh, I think if I said the same thing as Karen, then we'd either both be right or both be wrong. And either way, she would end up winning the game because she's already ahead of me. So I feel like strategically, I have to say white, uh, mm. which I also feel comfortable doing. All right. Going the gamesmanship route. 
Mm, I like it. Let's see what the chat room says. Yorkshire, I got to go with white. I don't think we are a huge population in Yorkshire. Guy Ritchie movie character white. Big black bucks. <laughs> Smith smart. Black it, black dot com. Oh, I mean black. Uh, black. <laughs> Since they compared them to Prison Bay, I say black. The thirst is real in the UK. BBB. In it, Twitter, white. Bl br breaking backs across the pond, black. <laughs> the correct answer is Karen said black. Mm -hmm. Mike said white. Mm -hmm. And Mike got it correct. He's white. Woo! White, white, white. <laughs> Don't take this clip out of context. <laughs> Uh, and Karen, you gotta get blue. He got a strong jawline, boy. Don't he? Like that's him. Um, so yeah, he's giving uh Jeremy Meeks a run for his money as being the next like felon heart heartthrob. Um, felons, where are my yeah. felons at? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ladies, <laughs> um, all right, let's get to the final thing that we always talk about here and uh, sword ratchetness. We got to talk about these swords, very long, quiet sound. He looked like Shannon, Shannon Tatum. If I said that, name Shannon right. Tatum, that yeah, is with that hard because he has like a, that hard uh, chin line. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's got a big chin. Mm -hmm. Taking it on the chin. Mm -hmm. All right. Sword ratchetness. Go around the globe. Talk about people that got these swords and the crimes and stuff they get up to. And we're trying to inform the world that we need sword control. We got gun control. Not enough sword control. Mm -mm. What's going on, everybody? Um, here's one. A white man. I don't know why. Got so specific. I'm sure it'll explain the rest in a second. Man, you know up front. Don't don't <laughs> no it's just man. No only man with sword does a lot of work in this uh <laughs> in this segment of the show. But a, a white man pulls out a sword as he hurls threats and monkey noises at a black driver. Oh no, yeah. So this is like not only is it um not only is this uh, uh the, the, the sword ratchetness, it's also kind of we're just fucking with them people because they black. We're just fucking with them people because they black. We're just fucking with them black people. We're just fucking with them blacks. We're just fucking with fucking with black people. <laughs> we got a two for one, didn't we? I think so. It would be interesting if he issued the same apology as Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> uh, we all sounded like hypocrites. We were like, this is a terrible apology. Um, a Minneapolis man has been charged with a felony for making threats of violence after allegedly threatening to kill a black man while brandishing a sword and hurling racial slurs. The victim told police he was driving through a parking lot when a pickup truck drove directly at him, stopped, and, and blocked his way. The driver of the truck, Gene Willard Abra Abrahamson, Ab Abramson? I don't know how you pronounce that. Yeah, that's a wild one. Yeah. <laughs> Abraham's son mm -hmm. um, allegedly called the victim who was black a fucking monkey and a fucking N-word. Um, and I think you know which one I mean, guys. Not nerd. While making the monkey sound, <laughs> Abrahamson then exited his vehicle carrying a sword, approached the victim, victim and threatened to kill him while using repeated, repeating racial slurs. Using his license plate number, police were able to identify Abrahamson and arrested him on Wednesday, and he was booked in the Hennepin County Jail. Surveillance video showing part of the incident was uploaded to Facebook. Um... So I don't know if this is, is this the... What's up, everybody? It's Detective Kyle Russian here at the St. Anthony... Wow, even cops are like TikTokers now. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's up, man? It's your boy, Detective Kyle Rogers. Hey, I'm like, Detective ah, Kyle ah. Here at St. Anthony Police Department. We've been busy planning your community academy, which is coming up October 2nd from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. What if he just started doing like a TikTok dance for no reason? Hey, no. That's what TikTok is for. <laughs> or he showed, he showed the, the guy with the sword video, but then it stopped with that song that, no... No. <laughs> yeah, register online today. Space is limited. However, we haven't forgotten about our jobs, and I'm here to bring you this week's review in two. 
The following are highlights of service, notable calls for service, and open investment. Wow, Cops doing some outreach. I just want to get to the, the racism. I am I is it even on here? What's it happening? Might, it might not be even be on here. Oh man, you know what? I'm gonna just good job, cops. If you got this guy, let's just leave uh, it at that. I don't know. I want to scroll through all this video. Um, but yeah, nerd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking nerd. What is that? It's like, oh, he really was just mad at geeks. I don't. This had nothing to do with the race. <laughs> All right, Mike, tell the people where to find you and uh -oh. see you on tour. Thank you so much. Uh, always a pleasure to always, chat with y'all. Uh, Mike Kaplan, M-Y-Q-K-A-P-L-A-N, all the places, social media, website. My newest album's called AKA, a bunch of other albums out there, uh, lots of places. And uh, my, my newsletter is at uh, mikekaplan.substack.com. Uh, I send out a free one every week, plus bonus ones if you want to sign up for more with jokes and stuff. And uh, oh, and, and my podcast, Broccoli and Ice Cream, y'all have both been on. And yep. The Faucet is one that I just do myself. So where podcasts are, you know where they are. You're you're in one. You're at one. It, this is one. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, those are, those are the things. Find me. I'm findable. And uh, thanks for having me. Thank you, Mike. Thank One you. of my favorite people. Appreciate yes. you coming through. Always. Um, and, and before we go, I like your emails. Roger responds most of the time, but I do read them. Just know that. And I like them a lot. Yeah, Thank I you, always Karen. read them. Thank Sometimes you. I feel pressure to respond back with something equally as clever. And then like, yeah, I don't know what to respond. And then with. like five days later, I'm like, that's not possible. <laughs> and then like 20 days later, I'm like, Hey Mike, thanks for the look. Hey oh, Mike, hope yeah. everything's good. <laughs> uh, I do it not. I don't do it for any particular reaction. Any, you're you're fine to say nothing. You're fine to say thanks. You're fine to say hello. Uh, whatever you wish is the right thing to do. So I appreciate absolutely, you. man. Thank you, dude. Thank and you. Uh, you know, good luck with the tour mm -hmm. and, and and getting all down to getting all the way down to Florida. And, oh yeah. And, end up and uh you know mm -hmm. uh, y'all go check them out go on the website yeah support you know thank you friends we love mike and y'all know we don't support people you know that, that are like bad people or anything like that well sometimes i do karen <laughs> <honest>. <laughs> but, but not this time yeah, yeah speak not but i just not this time not all right time. i'm over here supporting evil to be honest <laughs> no! but you know <laughs> and also mike and also mike all right, y'all. We'll talk to you later. Uh, once again, the show heck schedule is going to be hectic. Mm -hmm. I we really don't have any promise of when the next show will be for the for the next at least few weeks until I get this schedule. Uh, get to New York and get my new like schedule for like what we're gonna how long we're gonna be in the office writing stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, everybody, uh, wish for happy things, and uh, we'll be back uh, as soon as we can. All right, until then, I love you. I love you too. Uh, bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye, bye, Mike. Bye.